The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IA exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMD's Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This episode is brought to you by NetWealth, market-leading providers of technology, excellent customer support and expertise to help your wealth business thrive. Rated number one for overall satisfaction and value for money by Investment Trends and Chant West's Advised Product of the Year for the last four years, NetWealth is here to support you on your advice technology journey. See wealth differently and visit the website to learn how NetWealth can support your advice and wealth business. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and joining me here today to deep dive into the advice intelligence software is an accomplished equestrian, a fintech award winner and a software development survivor. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Jackie Henderson. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm very honoured to be here and I'm very excited that you've got this podcast because, you know, the advice tech world needs a bit of a voice. So thank you. Right. There's so much for us all to try and understand and get across. This just, oh, I know. It's never ending. It's a minefield, isn't it? <laughs> it all really is. Fintech, advice tech providers. It's just, and more and more and more, does. it's crazy stuff. It's crazy stuff. So I'm keen to dive into all things advice intelligence, but let's get to know you a little bit first um, via your use of technology. So tell me, what is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? <laughs> I'm a bit cheeky. So there's probably like the cheeky face, the cheeky laughy face. That's probably the most used one. But I actually, because I updated my iPhone, I've now got the new little fingers over your eyes, like peeking one. Oh, I really like that one. Yeah. Okay. It's a new newbie. Now, so I don't think kind I'm, of I'm going to have to update my iPhone, actually. folks. <laughs> oh, you are? Because I kept getting it and I was like, what is this emoji that has a question mark? And I finally updated my phone and it's like, oh, fantastic, new emojis. Right. You can't, can't get better or more exciting than that. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> so then if you had to delete all the apps off your iPhone and just keep three, which ones would you keep? Oh, okay. Well, probably my banking app. <laughs> <laughs> keep that one my slack because that connects me to my whole team yeah so cannot delete slack it's just amazing i love it and probably my outlook as well outlook yeah, okay messenger or something. Yeah, that's probably going a bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah look we've all got a bit of a business focus don't we so it makes sense yeah, that they're all yeah. business appy things yeah, um for sure that's probably my most used <laughs> Yeah, we, I mean, we in our business now we've gone fully virtual, and we couldn't do without Slack. That's where we live. Yeah. You know, that's that's yeah, really the office. Absolutely. You know, so awesome. All right, let's dive into advice intelligence. So, for the listener out there that maybe isn't as aware, let's go a bit high level and a bit broad. Um, let's give us a sense of you know what category does AI sit in the advice tech space? You know, and who are you sort of generally, uh, you know, lined up next to? You know, what sort of what sort of area do you guys play in? Yeah, so. Advice Intelligence is an advice tech platform that is really in the realm of goals-based financial advice, financial planning that you can do live in front of your clients, and it's kind of quite unique. So it's it's kind of sits a bit left field to most of your traditional, um, you know, planning and CRM platforms. Yep. So we're just that little bit different. So uh, yeah, we kind of look at 
digital advice. So a hybrid of human with technologically you know, providing advisors with enhanced tools so that they can you know, provide financial plans you know, with their clients yep. and produce instant digital statements of advice. So, okay. yeah, we've been building out our, our sort of unique tech for the last sort of six years. So it's been quite the journey. Mm. It's quite complex subject matter, of course. Yeah, and ever-changing sub- subject matter, I'm betting. Exactly. Superannuation tax law. So, yeah, it's, it's basically a, a new realm of financial planning. Awesome. So I'm betting then to having, you know, sort of taken a look at the broad elements then you've got the, and the that's particularly interesting actually for, well, there's a few, but particularly interesting is your sort of interactive discovery tool elements. Do you want to just talk us through initially? So, so guys, I mean, there's the normal, the CRM, most of the tools that are like this have a, a sort of core place where client data lives, you know, um, exactly. And there'll be some modeling and we can get to that, but this sort of the client's entree into, you know, advice and you is quite interesting. So do you want to run this through how that works and what that's about? Yeah. So the interactive discovery can be embedded on an advisor's website. So it's got like this little sort of plugin that advisors can put on their website, which is used to engage clients. So it's to take them through a simplified engagement um, journey that takes their goals and life aspirations because we like to, as a goals you know, platform, we like to look at the life aspirations for clients because we know that that's the most in th- you know, important thing that they're looking for. They're wanting you know, to either retire or you know, buy an investment property, whatever it is, um, we start with their goals. And then we look at, you know, 11 pieces of you know, high-level financial data, you know, what your, your liabilities are, income, expense information, key in that information and that produces basically their first iteration of their wealth map. So they get a little reward for just entering, you know, a bit of data and we make it, you know, inspirational as well. So it's it's a more inspiring experience to engage. So they can do that in the comfort of their home on their iPad and basically that produces their first iteration of their wealth map. So it will tell them based on their current financial circumstances whether or not they can or cannot achieve their goals. So it will say, you know, your 50% you know, achievability of achieving your retirement goal. So it kind of prompts them uh, to go, oh, wow, I really need to look at this. I really need to look at my retirement goal. I'm only 50% of the way there. So off the back of that, they can then book an appointment with an advisor and start the advice journey. So that's basically that interactive discovery, making it you know, an engaging process because, you know, they don't want to necessarily, you know, fill out a 500-page form as no. we have with fact finds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we found that, you know, with a lot of our consumer research that it wasn't a process that clients wanted to continue to pursue um, that traditional, you know, experience. It was a bit of a barrier and, and found that clients were dropping out of the process and not wanting to continue the advice journey and, you know, see an advisor and, and take the next steps. So the, you know, the objective of that is basically to to make them want to keep pursuing the advice journey with their advisor. So that's an interesting um, difference in the way that we sort of, inter- or the way we collect data from clients, because what's nice is you've sort of given them like an, an interim feedback loop, which is something that doesn't happen in most, you know, really, you um, Old school, to be fair, but but the traditional way that we've all done it, where you might collect a whole lot of information and then it goes into the black hole in which we keep <laughs> secret and we might analyze it, and then at some point in the future the client you know finds out something. So I think you know that's nice because aside from that, there is all this great work we do as advisors, but um, clients are used to instant gratification now on every other part of their world, you know, so they can find stuff out instantly. So to actually give them some initial feedback, and I'm assuming that that also, you know, very quickly identifies gaps. And that's a great thing, you know, to actually give them a reason to make that appointment, you know, like, yeah, because ooh. like, human behavior, it's like some, you know, people were driven by that bit of a confrontation, bit of fear, you know, oh, wow, I really need to do something about this, you know, and it kind of drives a bit more motivation and, and prompting to, you know, see an advisor and have a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So then 
what oh, now I'm going to go back a little because I am a bit curious. Like, and we do have we've interviewed a number of people that have sort of started their own apps for one of a better description of all types, you know, all sorts of things. And I'm just curious, what made you embark on this path? Because <laughs> it's been a fairly long one. I'm imagine somewhat torturous and involved, and maybe even you know cost and all sorts of things. What made you start this journey? Yeah, well, the journey started with having you know owned and ran a wealth management firm, so. I really innately understood all the pain points that financial advisors were experiencing running a financial firm. Like I just understood those um, quite intimately. So we, and also the client experience because we wanted to be um, like as in our wealth management, our value proposition was around the client's goals and life aspirations. And we wanted to design, you know, our advice process around that. So but there was no technology that existed. And this is some time ago, like we started the business back in 2004. So, yeah. you know, this, you know te- the technology wasn't there. And over that sort of 10-year period of running it, it, it just didn't exist. So that was kind of the motivation behind myself is just understanding the pain points, not having the right technology available to deal with that, and also understanding the way in which consumers were adopting technology because you know, we've seen consumers basically do this, like a massive J curve mm. in technology adoption. Like we run our lives through smartphone apps and basically advice has kind of been quite stagnant in terms of innovation around technology and the technology that is provided to clients. So I wanted to really bridge that gap um, between the way in which we're delivering financial advice, which is through paper still traditionally. We're giving these statements of advice like, you know, while consumers are running their lives off smartphones. And so uh, I really wanted, like, it really kind of developed this vision that I had around being able to have this hybrid model of human and technology um, designed around the life aspirations of clients, but then be able to be data-driven. So I wanted to create a data-driven financial plan that's live, you know, has their investment data, it has their bank account information, all of that feeding into it that can then track the client over their journey and have transparency between the advisor and the client. So, you know, the advisor can basically say, okay, my client just spent, you know, $150,000 on this you know, car. Like that wasn't in the plan. And so we can read baseline, you know, the plan in a dynamic way, not in a static way off a piece of paper that's put into a, you know, a drawer that the client never looks at again. Yeah. So I really wanted to provide innovation to the industry um, because, you know, a lot of the incumbents weren't. And I tried to work with the incumbents on, you know, back in the day before I embarked on the, the journey. It's like, how can I leverage existing technology providers? And and they weren't really sort of understanding my vision and, and what we kind of well, what I wanted to do and what, what I wanted to implement within my business. Yeah. So, yeah, that kind of was the starting you know point of of the company and probably a bit of naivety because <laughs> you know 6 years later and 50 million dollars spent on the technology you're kind of like <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow so yeah and and basically we see this triangulation in the market of you know you've got regulatory changes you know we've been in this constant state of change with all these regulatory changes we've got technology advancements happening. We've got Industry 4.0 where, you know, technology like machine learning, blockchain, uh, redefining industries. Mm. And yet we're not really adopting this technology to really leverage, you know, the industry and, and you know, innovate it and take it on the Industry 4.0 journey. So I kind of saw those factors. Um, and then consumer demand. Consumer demand is at its all-time highest. Like I hear advisors saying, I have to turn away clients because they simply can't service them. So I wanted to really help advisors through technology to, you know, meet demand, provide a better client experience, um, support them, really enhance their value proposition and help them articulate their value to their clients. So that's kind of, yeah. And look, the the time series data thing is a real like it, it's something that unless you've been asking lots of questions of multiple texts, you don't realize it's this sort of unicorn of something because lots of us can do, a, I can analyze something now and I can mm. analyze it back then 
and then they can yes. be two separate things, but it's not easy to to sort of have this dynamic moving feast that lets you go, all right, we talked about this being a goal. Where are you at now? How does that – like it's it's actually – relatively hard to do so so it but it's so intuitive to, to the client they're like well of course that's what i want <laughs> like, yeah you know i want some guard <laughs> that's the tangible understand. outcome i need to achieve correct like- correct so it's exciting to be sort of heading down that path now in terms of then based on all the sort of the elements that you've got then i'm betting it's not just advisors that are using this 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 becomes sort of a core tool you know the practices that implement this i'm betting it's you know other members of the team are all sort of users of ai is that right correct yes because yeah. we've got the crm at its core and then what's called the wealth map which is your tool that you can model out different scenarios do product comparators all of that with with the client live in front of a client but you've got the support of your power planner um, cause we've got models where, um, some of our clients have their power planner driving the technology, um, or the advisors driving the technology and, and not utilizing, you know, a power planner within their organization. And then you've got your support and admin. Yeah. You know, okay. People. So it's sort of, and a- then if you're a licensee, we've got all of that hierarchy as well. So a licensee can manage all the different practices underneath, um, their license. So, so yeah, and and we deal with all the compliance pieces as well, and and so that they can do you know simplified auditing and and um, you know compliance management. So I'm betting because you've sort of approached this from a um, individual you know client advisor relationship, and then sort of gone up to licensing. Then I'd imagine then it, it becomes that point where where the the needs can be different you know so it's mm-hmm. it must be hard to juggle that because um and and of course every advisor out there has experienced the reverse where something gets implemented you know top down um and it's great for the license bureau like oh for goodness sake this is not adding any any value you know so i imagine that must have been interesting as you've embarked on that sort of expansion up through to a, you know licensees having access and being able to use the tool that you sort of hit some you know decision points where well do we make that harder for advisors to make it better for licensees or not? Yes, correct. I mean, you've got compliance departments that also take on their own, you know, take and version around compliance. So, yeah. you know, it becomes very bespoke within, you know, a licensee. And so, yeah, we've we've been at both ends. So we've got, you know, the licensee in their agenda and the advisor at their agenda. But, but I think we've done pretty well, especially over the last 18 months, to kind of bridge the gap. And you know, between the licensee and the advisor, and um, and yeah, I mean, you've got as an example, we had um, one of the licensees that we we've been working with. Uh, they wanted you know because we we were all digital, and digital provides you know full audit report, like when a client read an SOA, what time, like when you know the multi-factor authentication sign off on the SOA, all of those bits, which um, you know help the compliance aspects, but yet. The compliance departments wanted to have it in Word, <laughs> a Word version. It's like we've just digitized, yeah, and it's more compliant, and you can do peer reviews, and you can do all of these things. But then they wanted, you know, in their thinking, to go Word version. But then they've realized and come back and gone, oh, now we've been, you know, using it in, in the like in the journey of of digital. We're like, oh my god, digital is way better. <laughs> and it's so, hard, isn't it? It's um. It is, because you get the need, like abundantly clear, the need for compliance and all of the structure and, yes. and their assistance, right? And there's all this insight they can give. But to be frank, they're given nowhere near enough time to understand and get trained on things like the tech that's out there. I mean, there there almost needs to be a program where compliance people just get inundated with all the advice tech, right? So that they can understand Completely. and go, oh, yes. this is in fact better and more compliant like you know but it, you've got to have taken that you know have the time to take that time um yes. and the understanding in the background and so you know i understand their challenge um but of course i'm also very deeply empathetic to the advisors who are like <laughs> like can we not make this exactly. just easier please you know i know because it is it's a behavioral change yeah. like it's all around behavior and that openness and willingness to you know, do things a bit differently, and and at the end of the day, you know, you'll reap the the benefits of just going through a little bit more pain to learn something new. Right. You know, it's like with any you know innovation, it's uh yeah, you kind of what I call the um the chasm of doubt, where you kind of 
become aware and then you're you're quite adverse and then you like you know start getting it and then you're like oh become a power user <laughs> so, <laughs> all of a sudden it's kind of, yeah exactly <laughs> Now you've you've been at this little while and you're you're getting both licensees and practices to on board. I'm betting though you you probably see a theme of you know who the tool really works well for in either a practice or an advisor type versus who might struggle. Like, is there sort of a do you see some difference in that 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 really you know who's the people that this just they just get it you know and it just really gets them sort of accelerating in terms of either their growth or their take up. Yeah, so definitely from a generation perspective, we do see that. Uh, so, you know, you're more millennial and, um, you know, Gen X type advisors, yep. Are, yep, get it. They use technology. They want technology to be more in line with the way they use technology now, like right. in, in other disciplines, like, you know, on their phones, et cetera, or, you know, how they bank or whatever. So, you see advisors really, you know, finding it easier to adopt um, from that perspective. But then you've got other advisors who are like, I just need my power planner to do it. So my power planner needs to drive it. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to, you know, learn this whole new, you know, realm. Yeah. (laughs) Quite happy, you know, in my little, you know, way of doing things. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's kind of like, I mean, we've been working with like especially one particular licensee uh, to ensure that all their advisors, because they're like, you know, this is mandated, you need to use this technology this way. And so we've kind of had to do a lot more hand-holding with those other advisors who are, you know, probably a bit older and, and um, have been doing things for so long in one particular way. So that that is, you know, a bit of a, a challenge, but we're, we've been working through that with, with the licensees and we have an amazing onboarding team that will help support that journey and train and, like, do a lot of the, a lot of the hand-holding. So, so, yeah, you definitely see it from a generation perspective, yeah, okay. um, that adoption. And I guess, um, you know, it's also – the ease with which, I mean, if you look back, then technology was something that, we, you know, we stepped into to use for a certain part of the process. Like it's humans, 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 talking, talking, humans, humans, tech analysis, then humans, 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 right? So, so you exactly. know, it was one piece. That's a significant shift to what I'm sort of hearing you describe, which is is more like this is your tech buddy that's going to sit with you as you go through this whole process with a client. This is not a, you turn up, you know, for one little step, it's a long for the ride. And so that is a, a mindset shift that's pretty significant. Um, it's you know. huge, yeah. that one, because you're now, you know, not using spreadsheets. You're now got this yeah, tech sitting in the middle of between you and your client that's modeling out all these various scenarios and determining what's going to give the client the best outcome because it can do thousands more calculations than your own human brain. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a bit more, you know, accurate in terms of projections and modelling and all of that and it's doing all this sophistication and, and it's making you look good because, you know, you, you can now do, okay, well, what if we do this and what if we do that and, you know, and it will show the client what will happen, what's yeah. the impact on this goal and this goal and, and you know, help those conversations around okay well we might have to trade this one off and you know set this aside or reduce the amount or reduce the time horizon or whatever it is it's it's this dynamic kind of experience so yeah okay yeah it's very new and so is there any for somebody who's sort of you know curious about the tool and and you know taking taking a look there is is there anything you'd get them to do before that just gets them really set up to sort of lean into a tool like this given that given that it's you know you sort of take buddy along the way then is there anything you'd suggest hey go away and work on this and that'll get you really set up yeah so the um kim who runs our whole onboarding team she basically has this incredible training journey and academy that our users go through and it's broken down into little chunks so it's not overwhelming and all too much. Cool. So we kind of break it down into little little chunks and and it's um, delivered via, you know, you can choose the way, you know, you consume the training as well. Like it can be on demand. It's also inbuilt. So, you know, if the 
user doesn't know how to you know, add a new client, they just type in add new client and the tech will actually tell them how to do it. So it's quite intuitive in that sense. Uh, but, yeah, and then also just doing that one-on-one or group sessions. So we run training, you know, across our website. So you can go to a website and just book into a training session that are run every day. So that's kind of, yeah, it's 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 all the support is there. Yeah. So it's really just kind of breaking down and, you know, doing little chunks. And, and it does take time, but, uh, you know, it's worth the, the time of investing into, you know, doing something new because, you know, we're evolving and, and you know, technology is going to enhance every industry no matter what it is, you know, the industry that you're in. There's going to be constant advancements um, of technology. It's, it's really kind of not being afraid of it and just really getting in there. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Um, are there any features or any elements of the tool that, like, you see – you know, current users have really ninjaed it, like you've, you've blown away by what they've managed to do or, or you know, the impact it's had? Is there anything that – any surprises like that? Yeah, well, I think the wealth map has been like quite – I mean, that's our innovation is the wealth map because like advisors are going, wow, I – well, first of all, their advice process is being completely cut like down – um, so all that friction that exists within the traditional manual, you know, advice process has been, you know, cut down so that they can basically become more efficient, um, reduce their cost of serve. I was actually presenting at a conference and one of our users came up to me and said, oh, my God, I love you guys. You know, we can now produce advice. Like I did a, a piece of advice and the other day and it took me an hour and I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's nice to hear that feedback too um but yeah it's it's the wealth map is the thing that you know we have you know really pride ourselves on because it's the tool that enables advisors to have enriched conversations with their clients and helps them to really demonstrate the value of financial advice yeah so that you know those people can go out and tell other people word of mouth that you know i went and had this you know, great experience. I saw this financial advisor and, you know, I did all these scenarios and, you know, I wanted to achieve all these things in my life. They helped me actually work out what it is I wanted to, you know, do with my life and and took me on the steps on, on how I need to get there, you know, breaking it down and what, you know, if I did this or if I did that, the impacts of, of decisions and how they have on, on my future. Yeah. So, it's so inspirational and um, that's the the part that I really love is that, you know, we want to, like, design people's lives. Yeah. Like, I want financial advisors to really design people's lives. I want the, you know, the emotional element and the inspirational element to really come out, like, transpire in, in the conversations that advisors have with their clients. And so, yeah, that that's the you know, the thing that I love. I, lo- I just love the, the wealth map and, and what it can do and the, you know, future iterations of it and where it's going to go from here. Yeah, it's um, – I remember having a conversation. I was lucky enough to try some virtual reality stuff for, through – a little while ago, um, actually yeah, through yeah. the XY group, and which was fun. And they were saying, oh, where did you, can you see this go? And I, I would love to be in a – you know, us all be at a point where somebody could put on these VR glasses and it be a visual – manifestation of that so they're looking into their future and they can see all these wonderful things they're going to be doing and they're grayed out if they're not possible you know so it's something that and as they work harder and do different things and implement some stuff suddenly they become more vivid and real and they get closer you know so it's really painting this picture of their future um because it's so motivating that sort of stuff you know, it it's really, so powerful. it is, it is, it really gets people going and taking maybe, and maybe not even hard steps, just, you know, breaking a few habits, breaking a few things that are the regular stuff we do, putting a more, bit more away, like all those little things we know everybody should do. You've got to give them that, um, that little bit of inspiration to, to get them there. So, you know, it's exciting to see where that could lead and, and, you know, the way we could take that, um, that sort of. Completely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cause it also helps um, the client because the client, um, it helps them visualise because 
that helps that reticular activation system part of the brain and really kind of creates that like real vision around what it is you want to achieve, Mm. which actually increases the chances and the probability of you actually achieving it. So the more you know, clarity you have around the things you want to achieve in life, the more you're going to attain them. So, yeah, that visual experience is really important. And we we actually did a prototype and, and we showed it back at um, the last FPA com, um, Congress mm-hmm. and it was an um, augmented reality app that enabled an advisor to have gold cards and basically bring those gold cards to life. Wow. And, you know, the retirement was like this, you know, couple on the beach and then there was like, you know, wanted to buy a new car and it had like this Land Rover and then it went inside the Land Rover and it was like, yeah, it was really cool. So It is and and I think we can get caught up in advice with the complexity of it all. But the thing is, most of what we do is rooted in data and in numbers and in calculation. And the minute you're in that environment, it's made for tech. <laughs> like tech like just loves that stuff. It's much harder when it's it's purely human emotion or or even physicality. We're not we're dealing with a lot of numbers, even if it's about inspiration, it's about the possibility their money can get them there. So it it makes sense that like you say, we'd be further ahead than we are. You know, because yes. we're actually an industry that's perfect for this stuff. You know? <laughs> it is. It's like numbers and humans. It's like the role of the advisor is all about numbers and it's all about human emotions. You're yeah. dealing with a human on such a personal, intimate level. Yeah. You know, you get told, you know, so many secrets. <laughs> and so you're a holder of all this valuable, like, personal information from your clients and, and then you've got to you know, do all this complex modeling and calculations and numbers and it's bringing like that together. And, and that's what our wealth map does. It brings that all together. And look, who knows where it'll go? I mean, there's now AI tools where instead of getting a stock photo for your website, you can use AI and it'll effectively paint you a picture that you're, you know, with certain elements. And, and maybe that's where some of this will go, where it's, you know, it's And project combined. you five years ahead. Like right. this is you in five years this or is you guys. 20 years of what you look like. <laughs> right. I mean, how exciting would that be? And and yeah. and how much fun would it be to present, you know, that advice? You know, it's, it's yeah, really absolutely. building, like you say, it's that sort of lifestyle architecture. It's really building a, a home and, and, you know, a future for them. So on that, now that I've really laid out, the development path for you. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you no just get it's on already that, there. I've got a whole vision. It's <laughs> it's there already in my right. brain. <laughs> please give me a list. Oh, dear. Is there anything coming up on the development pan, pl- path, sorry, you know, releases or anything that's that's coming up that um, you guys will be sort of, you know, been working on that's coming, you know, down the track? Yeah, we've got some exciting stuff coming out. So uh, we're enhancing our goals tool, our mm-hmm. goals modelling tool, so that it can – automate and predict advice strategies for advisors. So it helps go, you know, here's a client and all their information, their financial circumstances. And then these are the recommended, you know, strategies or trade-offs around the goals. So that that's, you know, automating that that advice process and some of those conversations helping support that because it's doing, you know, some complex modeling that sits behind that. Yep. So there's there's that coming out. We've got um, hooking up bank account data. So we've done the first iteration of a data-driven financial plan that's tracking to a client goals mm-hmm. through the investment data. So we get investment super pension data into the platform. The next stage of that is then we're hooking up the bank account data. So the client's bank accounts, their mortgage, their um, credit card. So if they've got goals of I want to pray down my credit card debt, they can hook up their account that has a you know, credit card liability and the strategy that is to pay down that debt in a shorter time period um, off surplus cash flow or whatever it is, whatever the strategy is, that actually sits behind the goal. So you've got the goal, the strategy, but also the account balance. And so that's that data-driven financial plan. So that's the that's where we're headed with the technology, which is really exciting. And then we've you know designed the whole data model around you know machine learning, and and we're looking at ways in which we can apply that to the industry um, as we build you know the data set. So 
So, yeah, it's super exciting. It is. And so in terms of that, um, say like a bank account or a, or a credit card, is that sort of focused at the moment just on the sort of the balance update or are you guys working towards that whole cash flowy ins and outs sort of end or is that not where it's at cash just flow, yet? Cash flow, yes. Yes, so cash flow. So yeah. definitely like that whole cash flow modelling because we do that in the platform, cool. the cash flow modelling. So it basically it's taking an extension on, on that. And it's exciting to start to get more of that. I mean, cash flow has always been <laughs> sort of the, the poorer brother of Foundation. advice for years, right? <laughs> like it's just sort of get ignored. Like it's the single biggest contributor to somebody's future outcome, but never mind. You know? Oh, exactly. <laughs> but I know. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, um, it's so important. And and when we look at elements, even like insurance, you know, the affordability of that insurance, it's oh. all well and good to want to protect yourself. But if you can't afford, actually afford those premiums, you know, we, we need to work that out. Okay, how are we going to reconsider this? So I think yeah, like you We said, do that instantly. Like literally we will model out your insurance, what you need, and then whether or not you can afford that in your cash flow. So it automatically does that in the wealth map. It will go, okay, well, you can afford that because it's going to set you this, how you know, comes into your cash flow. Yeah, yeah, awesome. That premium. Awesome. And I do think. Same with the advice fees. It's like, okay, well, can you afford the advice? Well, here's the advice fees model it in, in your cash flow. Yeah, for sure. And you want to charge. And so. people don't, it's funny, you know, as an industry and you'll go to an industry event and, oh, let's talk about financial literacy, all these sort of things. And invariably the first topic that comes up is something about super. And I always find that interesting because that's not how most human beings operate. When you talk about money, the first thing they don't think about is their super. No. No, because it's no. a long-term horizon. Correct. Like people don't think long-term in their thinking. Like no. they don't think long-term horizons. So super is this thing that's way out here. Yeah. and Whereas everyone thinks short-term. Like most, And to be mostly. fair, you know, the government mandating a level of super contributions has in part ticked off part of what they could be focusing on for super, right? Because – we're already forcing ourselves to do that. So tick, Correct. yay, but we're not doing it, you know, earlier on um, leading up to retirement. So I think the the need to sort of have a way to get a picture of a client's cash flow, even if even if you're not in maybe the business, you know, not all advisors are going to be into the minutiae of cash flow advice, but I think to be able to represent, you know, over time, even just changing balances in savings accounts, like all of that tells its own story, right? You know, it's, oh, it does. Like the numbers tell stories. Yeah. They always do. Like that's what we designed the wealth map to do to, you know, tell a story. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're a storyteller. Yeah. hundred you know, percent. And, and easily get those messages, you know, really quickly um, by taking a look and go, oh, wait a minute, that's heading in the wrong direction. You know, that sort of stuff. And there's also the behavior that sits behind that cash flow piece because that could be the blocker that's, it's not like, getting you to the goal that you're wanting to achieve. So if you're like spending habits are not, you know, contrary to, you know, the goal that you're trying to achieve, it's like that's the thing that needs to be nipped in the butt and that's the behavioural piece that the advisor needs to look at and work with. And, yeah, it's it's really that, you know, and then changing a few behaviours and mindsets and, yeah, kind of coaching in that sense. Correct. And, I mean, it sounds like um... – you know, as we sort of evolve with all these tools, it's, it's you know, the client needs some coaching and change of behavior and mindset and advisors do too. We're going to have to adjust, Absolutely. you know, we're going to have to change the way we do things and and potentially not force tools into our structure. We might need to shift and change and reconsider yeah. what order things happen in, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, completely. That's a really great point because I presented at the AFA conference recently and um, and a firm came up to me and said, wow, you actually just demonstrated to me that I need to stop thinking about my advice process first and look at the innovation that's been done and I need to change the my way of doing my advice process. Yeah. And so that's really, you know, that, that was a super interesting you know, point that this person made. I was like, exactly right. Like that's what we've kind of, you know, we spent, you know, over six years designing this advice process that's going to help you. It's like you guys have got to come with us a right. little bit, not just try and, you know, fit us into Ram your it in. traditional yeah. way of doing things, which actually isn't serving you any purpose because it's all, it's full of friction. Yeah. And it's manual and it's like, like, yeah. You, yeah. 
need to look at. And I think, look, it's, and, you know, we all say this sort of things, it's sort of hard to, well, what are you really saying? I mean, it'd be like if, you know, we, well, now a lot of the listeners are going to be too young for this, but in the old rotary phones, you know, you'd pick up the handle and then you'd do this circular dial thing, right, where you'd, for each number. It'd be like if when they, you know, developed the mobile phones and, and my iPhone now would still have the circular dial thing I've got to do for every number. Like, like, no, 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 <laughs> wait a minute. I need to change my process so that I can cope with the fact that I just press one button and get straight through to call a mate, exactly. right? So, you know, That's I think- a perfect analogy. Right? Absolutely. So I think we really, you know, we've just got to go with the flow a bit. And if it means that um, you get to know your own process a bit better so that it's easier to break, I know that sounds strange, but often it's easier to pull things apart once you really understand them, you know, and, and you can sort of break them up and then look at some of these great tools like yours and go, all right, how would that fit and what would we do? Um, then, you know, that's that's certainly the way we've always done it with tech um, is, you know, know our way first only so that then we can throw it out and go, all right, how we do it Bring the here. worlds together. Exactly, exactly. Now, is there anything we've missed, any parts of the tool? Oh, we haven't. Now, there is one thing. We haven't sort of oh, talked about the fancy modelling. statements of advice. Ooh. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's your wealth map, I guess. Yeah. yeah so the sort of modeling sense. There's all sorts of fancy uh, analysis words used, I know, for the, the work that the system does behind the scenes. Um, mm. But for those that are unaware of that, do you want to sort of give us the sense of why? I mean, when modeling, when people think of modeling and advice, often they just think of a spreadsheet. You know, it's sort of that one snapshot. So talk to us about how this is different. What is it doing differently? Yes. Yeah, so we're not running off a spreadsheet we're running off a very complex engine so um, we co-developed that over four years with Milliman who are the world's largest actuarial firm Mm -hmm. so uh, we basically it's got the ESG the economic simulation generation part of it it's got taxation law it's got super annuation law built in it's got you know assumption settings which are very robust you know designed by you know actuaries which can also be overridden by a licensee because they can put in their own assumption settings. So it's a this very, but it's also goals. So it's modeling all the advice strategies and the goals and it's modeling, you know, the probability of that client achieving the goal. And then it's basically taking all the different advice strategies that the client needs to do that will help them create a higher probability of achieving their goal. So that it's a very multi-dimensional um, modeling engine that sits behind a you know client-facing experience, which you know is digital and it's more inspiring and it's you know driven by charts and it's quite visual and you can turn strategies on and off and show the impact of each one of those advice strategies has on the client's goals, the outcome that they're trying to achieve. So. So, yeah, it's very, very different. It's not, you know, linear. It's, you know, driven by, um, you know, stochastic and all of that sort of okay. um, type modelling um, methodologies. So, yeah, it's it's very multidimensional. And so it's very, very unique. Um, you know, no one's sort of done this in the industry. It's, it's such a, you know, complicated engine, but it, it's got this really simplified client experience on the on the outside hence it took you know over six years to develop and you know and then being able to then do multi entities so trust super all of that bringing it all together so so yeah that's kind of the um the the wealth map but then it's also got added complexity that happens in the behind the scenes is as you are doing the advice with the client turning strategies on and off and doing different scenarios and comparing you know, this scenario against this scenario and benchmarking, it's building your SOA in the background automatically. So it's got this really sophisticated um, document generation. Well, it's, you know, document not in the sense of, you know, word (laughs) traditional sense, but it's building all the advice in the background automatically. And it's got a strategy library that, you know, can be configured by a licensee. And we've got all custom, you know, strategies that can be developed as well. And they basically, it's building the SOA and then you get to the end of the wealth map journey and you determine which scenario is going to give the best outcome for the client. You click a button, recommend that scenario, 
and it produces your instant digital SOA, which you can also then produce into Word if you want to, (laughs) (laughs) which I don't really recommend because you've got all the compliance aspects sitting there. But it's just building it automatically in in the background so you can literally sit with a client, model out some scenarios, recommend one, and produce a statement of advice. So it's streamlining that whole advice process, like removing all that friction um, that happens in, in the background. So, And I think um, for the listeners that maybe don't fully understand the input of something like so, so an actuary in that, in that sort of sense, aside from being financial mathematicians, You're an really. too. Well, I'm, yeah, I did that as my degree. Um, not fully qualified, so I want the Milliman folks to know that I'm not up here saying I'm an actuary. I I'm, I'm, didn't become fully qualified. I just did the degree. But um, aside from financial mathematics, what the way they train is what ifs. It's all what ifs. It's all about probability. It's all about, well, what if somebody, you know, lasted till 21? What if they lasted till 90? What if they – and so that's what – is the gem behind all of this is it's handling loads of what ifs without oh, you having so to do many. save scenario, copy, change one field, save scenario again, copy, change. So I think that's the difference is this breadth of what ifs because, of course, it might seem like there's millions of possibilities, but actually there'll be – it'll narrow down into some some guardrails of what's possible. You know, even though it is doing all of this work, it probably becomes really clear, well – this is your situation and you've sort of got over here or over there, really, which way are we going to go? So, you know, I I love that depth of, of analysis behind the scenes, you know, let that, let a machine do that stuff, you know. I know. Why would advice want to like do a spreadsheet? It's like, oh my God, we're taking all of that out of your hands. So you can like see more clients, you can, you know, build and develop more relationships. So yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Advisors to do that, not tinker around on spreadsheets, although, you know, don't mind the little tinker on a spreadsheet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a guy that, from years ago that was from my past life in investment banking and he, he talked about um, spreadsheet blankies. Sometimes, you know, numbers oh. people need a spreadsheet blankie. They just need to go into the spreadsheet and just feel safe and, and warm exactly. and <laughs> like so oh true God, that's so hilarious. true sometimes it's just nice to enter a bit of data in and you know yeah, and it does it all for you <laughs> exactly. so it makes sense is there anything else yeah. that any other elements of the system we've missed out on or, or no can... i mean it's basically i mean the four components are really that interactive discovery you know plug-in um engagement tool then the wealth map which is your you know we, we do three in one so we do you know your full modeling product comparators and instant digital SOA generation. So it's that full seamless experience. Uh, So that's the uniqueness of of the wealth map is, you know, it it handles those three components and does all your research. We've got, you know, FE fund info data. We've got data from Omnium, Champ West. And, yeah, so it basically is bringing all that data in and, and simplifying it. And then we have the wealth app, which is the client portal. So the client actually can see their financial plan it's tracking to their baseline and the recommended scenario that you've um, provided your client and their goals and so they can log in they can see their statement of advice they can see their ongoing service arrangement their fees everything's fully transparent so that's the wealth app which is the collaboration between the wealth map the advisor use the crm and the client so they're kind of basically the the four main components and, of course, the CRM. So Perfect, perfect. And yeah. I'm sure there'll be more to come, I have no doubt. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> We've got, we're just getting our open APIs, so that's that's on the horizon. So, yeah, we'll be able to integrate with lots of cool different new tools and awesome. you know, other CRM platforms because we know that, you know, advisors don't necessarily want to, you know, be – Using our CRM, they yep. might have you know central like a licensees using Salesforce or whatever. Salesforce or something like that. that. They yep. can integrate. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so open APIs. So Ooh, very exciting. That is exciting. Well, that's a well, I like that as a finish because I'm a big fan of open APIs. I think more is possible. <laughs> the more all these things can talk to each other, the more creative we can all get, um, exactly. and find that magic end outcome rather than you know relying just on sort of you know really determined people like yourself to find, to find us the, the right outcome. We yes. can sort of contribute in some yeah. small way to all of that. Um, I know. We want to focus on what we do best, which is, you know, advice, 
and advice generation and yeah. digital data driven financial plans. That's kind of you know our focus. Helping advisors. <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it. That. <laughs> All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Advice Intelligence, then we're going to include the website link in the episode show notes along with Jackie's uh, LinkedIn details so that there'll be a link there and you can always poke and prod her on there. I'm sure she'll point yeah, you towards absolutely. a member of the team. Come, so, yep. Yeah, exactly. Come, so she, yeah, you can connect. reach out to her. Uh, look, thank you so much for joining us on the show, Jackie. I'm really sort of Looking forward to witnessing the next stage of your software development adventure because I'm sure there's going to be some more exciting and mind-blowing things in the future. So thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And thanks for being the voice of Advice Tech. (laughs) So are you a current user of Advice Intelligence? I'm sure there will be a whole lot of uh, advisors in the uh, XY Advice community that would love to hear your take, how you found it, some of the um, things that we talk through then, how valuable they've been, even how you've approached it in terms of implementing it in the business. So please share any tips or ideas or suggestions um, of how you've gone about it uh, on the platform. And as for my thoughts, I just want to expand on something that um, Jackie and I touched on there, you know, when tools are sort of as fulsome as advice intelligence or AI is, it's going to be really important to have a strong handle on what your current process is in its minutia, all the way down to all the details. So that then when, you know, should you decide to onboard a new tool, it's going to be very clear then when you line them up next to each other, where things need to, you know, change, maybe to incorporate things like the online goals discovery tool. That's probably going to change those first few things you do with a client or that you send them or the emails they get, all that sort of thing. It's going to change. So that's only going to become really clear when you have you can provide great detail, lots of boxes and arrows for your current process. And then you can sort of lay them next to each other and, and brainstorm with the team on what things would adjust, maybe what things would change order, you know, what things may become unnecessary completely because it's part of the tool. So if you don't have a well-documented process right now, then, you know, if you take on a new large system, it's going to become unfathomable and it really is going to blow your mind. You'll probably end up quitting before you even start. So, you know, having made that mistake myself uh, in the past, I'd really encourage you to get a handle on your current processes in terms of documenting them at the very least, some lots and lots of boxes and arrows um, so that then you can really brainstorm how you would implement a tool like this. And if you do then decide to sort of shift to another major system, Uh, like this, then, you know, invariably you're going to have to, you know, template your documents up or you, all sorts of um, written communications with clients are going to have to um, be loaded up into the new system. So take a moment to really um, have a good look at all of the language you're using, the style, the layout, and all of those sort of client related materials, you know, be a bit bold, get a bit creative, and even consider maybe hiring a copywriter to really help with the language. You know, let's get some clarity for the way we communicate. And if you're going to have to sort of load up all of these templates and and um, words up into the new system, well, why not, you know, give them a zhuzh before you load them up? Um, I know everything needs to be technically correct and compliant, but it also needs to resonate with the client or the end user. So, take this opportunity to really sort of lift the comms that are generated by the system and your team. Now, I do want to give you a little warning though. Um, When you consider moving from whatever core financial planning system you have and you're looking at others and we all do that and we all should do that on a semi-regular basis. you know, we're going to come across, um, you know, some some tool uh, that has all these wonderful functions, you know, and add-ons and, and all sorts of extra features. And we need to be really, really wary of scope creep, right? Now, generally, if we're looking at other tools, it's because there's a particular function we need filled. You know, there's something that we're either missing or it's too slow or it's not working right or, you know, there's going to be a reason you started looking. You know, it might be we need it to get more efficient. We need the client experience to be enhanced, you know, this is great. This is what we should be doing. What's the problem we need to solve? And let's go out and find something that will solve it. However, what happens is when we start looking around at the options out there, then we find all sorts of other things they do, super cool things, exciting things, and then we latch onto those. 
And suddenly the specific improvement we wanted to make has expanded into this complete business changing life altering transcendent decision. That is scope creep, right? Um, And the danger is that, you know, when we get distracted by all of these bells and whistles, right, and all of those potential, we don't actually solve the problem that brought us here. Now, it's okay if you get the bells and whistles and also solve the problem, but it can be easy to miss the original frustration or the original thing you need to fix. So, you know, to sort of combat this, right, to make sure scope creep doesn't creep in, um, then get the team together. You know, brainstorm, brainstorm their biggest bugbears, the things that are a massive challenge, the things that are holding them up, what gets in the way, what gets in the client's way, Right create a huge list and preferably prioritize them. Um, And then aside from that, you can get the team to make a list of nice to haves. You know, these aren't the things driving them nuts on a day-to-day basis. These are the nice to haves. And then make the scope of whatever you're looking looking for out in the software or tech world and make that scope list really clear so that you can measure every system you look at against your list, against your requirements, right? And then you can even report back to your team on how each one stacks up because then they can keep you honest and so you don't get distracted by all the wonderful shiny bells and whistles. So, you know, absolutely these tools are fantastic, you know, and there's so many things we can implement um, and really rev up financial advice for our clients. But let's do it smart. Let's make sure that we get the things that we need fixed to fixed first. Now, as you know, there's only one skill uh, we all need to become these bionic advisors, the perfect combination of human-centric advice and technology. And that skill is avid curiosity. So, to help you build that habit, today's Curiosity Corner app that really caught my eye is Heroic Headshots. That's actually really hard to say. Heroic Headshots. Now, you can find that at heroicheadshots.com. And basically, this is a tool um, or a website that provides virtual headshots for remote teams. Interesting, right? So basically, they offer a step-by-step process where they teach you how to take headshots from home just using your phone. And then when you upload those photos into their system, editors will actually hand edit and review each headshot to get it to sort of studio quality, you know, so and maybe to, you know, maybe take out a few wrinkles. I don't know. So um, basically, they'll edit it and you can select a background so that all of your team have consistent headshots, Right. And there, and heroic headshots on the team within there will actually manage that. If you've got multiple team members you want to do this with, they'll coordinate and manage that all for you. Um, now, more and more of us have team members, whether they're all over Australia, New South Wales, or all over the globe. So it can be a little bit of a struggle to get a photo shoot done so that you've all got up to date headshots, whether it's for the website or your emails or even for LinkedIn. So I really sort of love the idea of a specific tool and service that can step in. Um, you know, when doing that headshot day just isn't possible. So check it out. And if, if you actually do take part, I'm seriously considering it myself, then I'd love to hear what you think. Welp, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automagically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker at your next event to brief your audience on the seven habits of bionic advisors and all the secrets to tech-powered human-centric advice, or maybe you'd even like to go on our wait list for the niche down and scale up masterclass slash workshop slash sort of general get it done day, then please just reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, That's at forward slash PeterMD, which is P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.